and I think this is everybody. Let's just give it a second. I'm gonna share my screen while, while we're doing that. Uh, here we go. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna share part of the club ebook. Um, well, let's get started then, because um, I know Jody had that kind of pre-registered, and a few people will pop in if uh, if they were, uh, weren't pre-registered. Um, so I was kind of jotting down some notes while the Winst while Winster's video was playing. Um, and I'm gonna, I didn't know, I guess I gotta apologize. I didn't know about uh, kind of the timeline of events for the SWOT analysis when Steve and I were talking. Um, we knew that uh, that was part of the plan for global membership approach, uh, which is going to affect the membership chairs in, in this room tonight. But um, in addition to the membership chairs, um, you know, if you're here for service and you're here for marketing, you're part of that team. Um, and, and it really needs to be a team-wide effort uh, with your club secretary and your club president. Uh, and I should say presidents because the first vice and the second vice need to continue um, whatever it is that you, you discuss when, you, when your uh, team goes through the SWOT analysis. And if your club has board, a board of directors, they need to be involved in that conversation and as a, uh, as a team as well. Um, just a little history. We did try to do something like this about five years ago. Uh, we did hold a club quality initiative um, that the GAT team at that time uh, ran when uh, Jody was district governor. And that included several zone chairs and uh, young club officers such as myself and, and probably a young club officer named Steve Pogue. And uh, we, there was some smart goals in the club quality initiative. And we, my club, uh, we, we took those and we, we took them to heart uh, to really find what are our strengths and our weaknesses and, and where are our opportunities um, for adding new um, service projects and new fundraisers. And we were kind of able to find a balance um, with service projects, which drove our, drove our membership plan. Um, we've recruited probably about 25 new members over the, the past uh, four years. And that's a pretty big number, um, but it, it all started because uh, we were doing something. You know, we were having fundraisers, we were doing service projects, we were visible in our community. And we were, and, and more importantly, we were asking, we were asking the right people who believed in what we were doing and they wanted to join and be a part of our club. And so that's, that's why I can say with confidence, if, if you guys, were, if everybody works together as a team, if all of our clubs work together as a team, they're going to find success some some form of success in recruiting and retention. Um, I'm a true believer in on this one here. If you can see my mouse, this is your club, your way. Um, you know, every club has its own has its own way of doing things. But uh, back to what Winster was saying, um, you know, if you work as a as a team on a common goal, support everyone's ideas. Um, you know, maybe maybe you fail, maybe it doesn't work. But so what? Um, you learn from your mistakes and you move forward and you work as a team towards that common goal. And, and that really is, uh, you know, what are you guys doing right? Um, your strengths, where are your opportunities for growth? And, and what's, what are your weaknesses and what, are, what is threatening your club? And a lot of that uh, can be found right here in these resources in the Club Quality Initiative. Uh, Blueprint for a Stronger Club and your club your way. Um, club quality initiative covers a lot of stuff that, you know, as a membership chair and a service chair, uh, you'll work together as well as there's a marketing plan in there uh, for your marketing chair to, to really start posting stuff on social media as well as uh, traditional media. Um, there's some other great uh, resources here to, you know, for making a membership chair survey. 
and then as well as membership satisfaction, which is going to uh, a guide that's going to help you really hone in on what's making the members in your club happy. And happy members obviously uh, helps your retention. Um, as we said, we're going to do a kind of a, G, a brief general overview. So kind of in a nutshell, um, I would take this, uh, this ebook uh, for membership chairs um, as a really good guide uh, for developing a plan of how, how you're going to retain members. And then uh, I'm going to pass it over to Steve quick, uh, kind of do a, a brief general overview on service chairs. And then we're going we're gonna to open it up to discussion for questions and answers so that um, I'm not, Steve and I aren't talking all night. We can kind of hear from you and, and hear what your questions are. Um, the only thing that I'm going to leave you with for the membership chairs, um, it's only your job to make a plan. Recruiting, recruiting members for your club, that's everyone's job. This is a team effort. And, uh, you know, let, let her make everybody uh, help you with the plan. Thank you. Um, Adam, can you, uh, I think we should unmute everyone, I guess my question is, and of the group here. Um, I believe everybody can unmute themselves. Oh, they can unmute themselves, okay. Yep. So yes. I was gonna say, how many of you out there are your membership chair this year? Is everybody pretty much membership chairs or? No, I'm marketing. Your marketing. So how many other marketing people do we have? <laughs> and how about service chairs? All right. Chair and marketing are fairly new. Uh, I think uh, Lion Bill Baker is going to end up wearing all three hats this year, probably. But over time, our goal is to expand out. Um, these are board positions. Um, Service is important. I'm the global service team leader for the district. Um, and obviously service is a big part of what we do. And as Adam mentioned, service is what really gets uh, people in the community to see what we're doing. And that service, uh, you know, maybe start with a, with a fundraiser and then it goes to a donation or whatever, but basically everything we do is some sort of a service um, project really uh, and it's really out there putting us in front of the community so um, just to talk about that a little bit obviously we've got uh, um, five different areas that we as Lions International has brought to us so hunger vision diabetes environment and childhood cancer um, and those are things that um, I guess a good time Adam to mention like uh, kindness matters we have a uh, different projects during the year, Kindness matter starts right away when things start. I think you've actually got to get the initial in by August. Yeah, really? I believe the deadline, so. On that, what's uh, that? I got to, oh, we're admitting somebody that I'm not dealing with that. Um, Kindness matters really, from if I'm remembering right, that starts uh, with a project that you've already done, and so then you need to you need to join as a join together as a club and uh, nominate probably a, a good a really good service project that you did that helped other people, um, and then I believe that deadline is August fifteenth, but let's I just say August first. <laughs> yeah, get it get it in. <laughs> yeah. And last year, um, Adams Club, the uh, Cross Plains, uh, won that award and actually went on and won our state and then was entered in international and was not in the top, whatever it is, I think 15 in the world, but uh, um, congratulations to Cross Plains. But um, service chairs, again, your, your key part is to work with uh, uh, Global Action Team. Um, you work with myself, the service coordinator. Um, hopefully, we can bounce ideas off of other service projects. This year, we did the um, Next Trex program. Some clubs, especially out on the uh, southwestern part of the state, had a hard time because some of the grocery stores that 
were originally going to be involved with that, uh, forgot they were going to be involved with that. And we're trying to straighten that out. So maybe we, some of those clubs can do that this next year. Um, but we are looking at another, um, introducing another service project and that'll come out before uh, the new year. So um, if you look at the information I sent out, this club service chairperson ebook, and I, I'm not sure if all of you heard, I saved those ebooks in a PDF, sent them out, and for whatever reason, the um, links that are in the book disappeared. So if you clicked on them, you could not get to the areas. We can send those back out, but if you just go on, um, Actually, Steve, I'll uh, I'll put them in the chat just for okay. uh, this for this group. Yeah, for this group, we had club membership chair ebook, a club service chair ebook, and then there's also a, a club community uh, several pages that that end, and all of those have uh, links to them. Um, so do go back to that and and kind of read on what that is. I think again, the service chair is a fairly new position. Um, but the way it is meant to be set up is a service chair can actually put in their service. Is that correct, Adam? Into that the is, uh, that is correct. Um, so and and same thing with membership. You have access to um, my LCI, which as of right now exists for your membership roster. So basically, in a nutshell, what happens is the presidents and secretaries have full access to both of these websites. Um, when you enter a member or drop a member um, for my LCI, presidents and secretaries can do that, membership chairs can do that, and club admin can do that. Um, in my lion, any lion in your club can enter a service project, but it has to be signed off. It, it doesn't count unless it gets signed off, and the only people that can do that are presidents, secretaries, service chairs, and the club admin. So service chairs have full access to my lion and uh, membership chairs have full access to my LCI. Okay. Yep. Um, and in both cases, if you need help with that, Adam and I can do that. Again, the expert is really Bruce Voice is awesome. <laughs> Yep. And can walk you through. I think there's actually going to, get, going to be a training on some of that. Is that right? That'll be mainly for secretaries. But if anybody else would like to join in on that, that would be good. Yeah, we're, we're highly encouraging this. Um, we had a situation this year where a secretary, a club secretary quit their club. And the club got locked out of my LCI is basically where this originated <laughs> from. And the reason I tell you this is that my LCI is very, very important. Um, treasurers have access to it for your club's bills, but they only have access to the bills. They can't do anything else. Um, so with service chairs or member, sorry, membership chairs having access to it, um, you know, if, you're, if your club gets locked out um, because you don't have a secretary or, or you don't have, or, or the president or um, another real world situation that happens frequently is, um, Clubs don't have their officers enter on time. And so come July 1st, if your club's officers aren't entered into my LCI, you can't, you can't get in. Now, no, you can't get in because you need to, you need to have them entered whether you're uh, carrying over as a uh, membership chair. In that situation, the only person you can contact to unlock you is Bruce Boyd. Yep. <laughs> um, again, talking about the, you know, we have the five global causes that we work with. I think we're all working with the vision. We do vision screening. So uh, most of us are, are being able to do that. Hunger, many of the clubs out there are doing uh, food drives and such. Environment, um, everybody's working on an environmental project. And diabetes has always been a big thing for us. Uh, Adam and I talked, one thing that seems to be a little more difficult for clubs out there and we hope to try to direct you is uh, the childhood cancer. I mean, that's a great cause, but it's difficult. There's been more difficult for clubs to find uh, um, a way to, to in incorporate that into their club. Um, I don't know if any of you went to state 
convention. I went to the state convention and actually sat in on a, uh, a program with a group that works with some of the children's hospitals. Uh, we ourselves, our club found it was difficult to reach out to like a UW Madison's Children's Hospital. Um, they didn't want to hear about giving money to them because they have their own things. Well, now we find out there are groups out there that actually work behind the scenes with them. So we can share that with you. Um, and again, hopefully that can be an area that we as a district can grow in because um, obviously it's a very important area. Bill, you had your hand raised. Yeah, the question I have is for when do we get access to um, my LCI and how do we get that password and all that? Absolutely. That's a great, that's a great question. So what happens um, generally is uh, basically July 1st, the, the lion's year turns over. And as long as your existing club officers have uh, next year's officers entered into my LCI, um, you will have access as of July, as of July 1st. Um, sometimes there's a little bit of leeway if something's going on uh, maintenance wise at LCI, um, just to kind of give you worst case scenario. Um, it, it could be as late as I've seen it before when I think LCI, my LCI was a little newer. It was as late as July 15th. Um, but you would have access. And then uh, the way that works, if you've never signed in before, um, which most people here have, but if you've never signed in before, um, you will need to know the email that you get Lions emails from. That would be the email that is on your club roster. Um, that's how you would log in. And I believe, no, I'm wrong, aren't I, Richard? You, if you're signing in for the first time, you need your membership number. Yep. <laughs> so that's another thing. So what the best way to do it is you can contact your club secretary. Otherwise, Steve and myself um, and Tony, we all have access where we can find uh, your membership ID. Um, the other way you can find your membership ID is on the Wisconsin Lions newsletter that comes out in the mail. Yeah. Um, on your address label, there should be like a a seven or eight digit number above your name? No. Nope. Can, you, can you show me that quick, Bill? It should be, yeah, it should be where you're. Um... Oh, you got to be kidding me. They took that away? Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, that used to be on there. It used to be on there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's, been off of there for, that's been off of there at least for the last five or six editions. Oh, man. <laughs> Contact, well, Bill, your club, thought. <laughs> contact your club secretary. Contact your club secretary. <laughs> yeah. If that fails, contact us. We, we can get that for you. Um, yeah. If you have signed in or when you do do that, um, it'll prompt you for your the email that is on file. Um, and then you can set up your password and you've got access to it. That's a great question, Bill. That even stumped me because it's been a few years now. <laughs> Um, any questions as far as the service part goes and anything that, uh, if you have a project that's worked well for you, share it with us so we can share it with the rest of the district because, uh, all the clubs are looking for projects that can be done. I think a lot of us do a lot of fundraising, uh, but we're always looking for a little more service and not necessarily uh, a fundraising project, or it could be incorporated where it's a service project that ends up being a fundraiser as well, but um, we're always looking for that service project. I think a great thing is go to your zone meetings and talk to the other clubs, find out what projects they're doing. And the nice thing about that is since they're close to you, you can get detailed information from them, or in fact, possibly go over and participate with theirs. Yeah. That's a that's a good point. There's a lot that you can learn at zone meetings. I would encourage, um, you know, that's usually those are usually attended in our district by presidents and secretaries. But um, we're we're trying to encourage and change that thought process so that uh, membership chairs, service chairs, marketing chairs um, are thought of as exec exec team and uh, attend those to start getting ideas for projects and 
uh, different ways to recruit members and, and, and really hear the ideas of what's working for clubs in your zone and what's not. And those three positions are really going to work hand in hand. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, probably the, the, if you've got all three in your club, get together and do a, a club and community needs assessment. It's a good way to start out and find out what you need. Um, that's also in one of the um, ebooks that we sent out. You can take a look at that. If you need anything, let us know. We can get that back out to you. If the uh, you, you can't, can't get into some of the uh, uh, links, um, but that's a good thing to do, uh, not only for membership chair, but the service chairs. Of course, marketing is very important to both areas because um, if you can get it out on Facebook, different ways to market, uh, that really helps the membership chair because uh, they're getting the word out about what the club's doing. And the same thing with service. Um, you know, we hear of a lot of clubs. Uh, a good example is Marshall. I know that Marshall has a fairly large uh, group of members, um, but a lot of their members signed up because of a fundraiser that they did. They like the, uh, um, what, what's the one in the, in the, in February? Lobster and fish lobster. Or, um, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, they do, that's in the summer. They do a, a steak and lobster feed. A lot of the guys really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. So they, do they come to all the meetings? They really don't. Some, some They've got a nice turnout for their meetings, but, but not, you know, the 89 members or whatever they have currently. Uh, and then they also do a, uh, a winter fest, uh, uh, jam, uh, fishing jamboree in the in February, and again, there's guys that they're very guys and gals that are very passionate about about that fundraiser, and they saw it in their community, and it was that <clears throat> with them to Lions, and why now they're uh, a Marshall Lions. So I keep that in mind too. Um, some communities are nice and small, tight knit; others are larger. Some for a bigger community, it's a little tougher to get your arms around all the all the folks there, but I, I know when I go to some of the smaller communities, uh, the whole community kind of comes out for that event. So that's real nice. Um, we haven't forgotten about you, Michelle. Um, I do want to talk, <laughs> we, I do want to talk uh, uh, more about marketing here with, uh, and, and touch on what Steve's talking about. Um, he is right. Uh, social media is going to be a big driving force yeah. here. And uh, what I would, you know, what I would recommend really is for everyone in the room and, and to really take this to heart. Um, you know, the marketing director might be in charge of the social media or they might have be running the account, but um, you really need to have a few administrators of your club's page um, because you never know when something might happen. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to have a backup. But the other thing too is the, the, the one admin of your page, of your Facebook page or other social media accounts, they can't see everything. Um, the way the algorithms are on the news feeds, um, you know, having multiple people means they're gonna see different stuff happening in your community that they can share. And what I mean by that is, um, you know, if you, if you wanna be more of a community page, um, you know, you should be, in, in smaller towns this works where you follow your police department you follow oh, your fire department, okay. Okay. you follow other organizations okay. in town, and you share their, their events as well. Um, in turn, they'll help promote you, and okay. that gets more people to your to your events okay. and on your page and, and in your audience. Okay. Yep. Um, another thing, I was going to say another thing for marketing, um, and I know we can be guilty of it, is, you know, we, we maybe get something in the newspaper, and it's... Uh, uh, us giving a check or mm -hmm. check, but the most uh, successful things are lions in action. So try to remember to take pictures oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. at the events, post those mm -hmm. because action pictures are better than just uh, a mm -hmm. picture of somebody giving a check or taking a check. I can tell you again that Lion Bill Baker, who's on this call, uh, is very involved with our Sunshine Supper, uh, which we serve every Monday night in Sun Prairie. And uh, uh, Lion Bill will get out his phone, and I think I belong to four of his groups. And if it's at the right time, he'll be telling you to come on down, and and, <laughs> and, and it's uh, you know it gets you kind of fired up. So uh, those are those are things that you gotta almost be a little bit of a of ham and and an actor, and uh, 
get out there and, and uh, let people know what you're doing live, you know? Okay. Okay. And, and Richard added a good comment um, here, actually two good comments. Um, be sure to add your school district too. Uh, for many of us, um, we're in a, well, most, I should say most of you, not many of us, because I'm not, uh, but uh, most of us are in a small school district where our, um, there's, there's one school in town and that, that's kind of the providing force for entertainment and activities in town. Um, that's a good way to, to stay in touch with what's going on. Um, the other good, good uh, comment he added was without a photo, it never happened, which kind of ties into what Steve is saying and what I would also like to uh, touch on next, um, don't be afraid to try other platforms for social media. And, okay. and same with the membership and service chair, service chairs, you know, be sure to um, encourage whoever's running social media in your club to try those too. Um, for example, you know, Facebook's great because Facebook's kind of your all in one, but um, you might reach more members and it might be more, uh, uh, better to display photos on say like Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter works, although I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm um, waiting for a lion pogue to do a TikTok. I mean, I am, I am too. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, and it, Adam brings up a good point. Um, for example, my son, I've got a 35 year old son him and my daughter-in-law, they're, they're not on Facebook anymore. They thought it was, you know, too much crap, to be honest with you. They didn't want it. So they're tweeting and sniffing <laughs> and all that. That's where that age group is. And that's who we really need to draw into our clubs. They're uh, mm -hmm. energetic, young uh, mm -hmm. folks in the community. I want to call on Richard quick, because I know he's on TikTok. <laughs> Richard, how does Richard. how does TikTok work for you? <laughs> I just wanted to say one thing, and that is, I'm going to take a picture now. Are you ready? We're ready. <laughs> <laughs> Never ever underestimate the value of a smile in a photograph. Uh, it makes when you've got an, a person with a frown on their face, you're not selling anything when they're they're telling you they're having a good time. We've actually seen some lions doing TikTok stuff. I don't know if you've looked at TikTok. It's it's entertaining, but it's crazy. Um, mm -hmm. And some people are giving it a try. But it, for me, at least, I find I, I'm best at recruiting people about one generation younger than me. It's tough for me to recruit people who are 22. And the idea about Facebook and website to me is that when you're visible in the community and people know you're there, they say, okay, I know there's a, I know there's a Lions Club somewhere. How do I find them? And when you do the Google, they'll find you on Facebook and they'll find your website. And that's really the key. You're, you may not be advertising. You may just be visible. You're there to be found. So it's, it's just a thought. I think Instagram is, is a good connection because you can do it directly with Facebook. A uh, Lions Club International has TikTok. They have their own TikTok account. Wow. I mean, there's a ton of them on here. This is great. I didn't realize it. Um, the other thing Look I'd like to do... <laughs> The other thing I'd like to do is uh, if you look at Richard's photo here, I'm going to put in a shameless plug for Richard here because I'm curious though. Um, so Global Lions Forum, that's GLF. That's that logo that's behind uh, as you're looking at him. It'd be, well, it'd be his right shoulder, but as you're looking at him, it's to the left of him. Um, GLF is Global Lions Forum. Uh, this is a Facebook group and Richard posts stuff uh, several times a day. Um, different topics to, to, that have conversations going on. Um, I always learn something, something new, probably daily, if not daily, at least uh, once or twice a week by something that I see or engage in the discussion um, with other lions worldwide. But um, there, there seem to be a lot of lions in our, in our state. Um, there are a few lions that comment in the Milwaukee area um, and, and you're dealing with lions at all levels, uh, past district governors, um, zone chairs, uh, new lions. Uh, it, it's just a great wealth of knowledge and, and a quick um, 
you know, quick conversation to really make you think of things from a different angle or, or perspective or give you new ideas um, for how to handle situations in your club. Any questions at this point? Anything you guys want to share with us? Kay, do you want me to call on you? <laughs> You can call on me. I'm trying to think of what I'd want to say. Do you have something I should be sharing? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? I'll, I'll embarrass you quick. So Kay, uh, uh, part of the service chair position for the service chairs in the room um, is, is being derived out of the, the secretary position. And I was finding that as GMT, I had too many duties to do. So um, Kay really stepped up and took over as uh, service chair um, this last year in our club. And uh, I got to say, uh, she really hit the ground running, but uh, she's doing a fantastic job really understanding and, and um, understanding the role, understanding the global causes that we have, uh, finding new projects, finding new fund fundraisers um, that, that because uh, we kind of included those in there. And then just uh, Helping, helping manage or helping the secretary and, and everyone else kind of manage the hours and the volunteer base, um, kind of being that contact person for um, uh, the committees that should be running the, each event, if you will. Thanks, Adam. I think I can do a better job with that. I'm okay. always trying to figure out, uh, that's <laughs> nice to hear, um, yeah. but I'm always trying to figure out, you know, um, where I can think of new things, right? Or what, what to suggest. And so I need to be, I think a little bit better at that, but thank you. I appreciate the compliment. Rome wasn't, and remember, uh, like, that's what I'm gonna say to Kay in, in, in retort is uh, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, this, <laughs> all, this is all a process. Um, yeah. this, this could take years. And, and when you're in this position uh, for, all, for all of you, you know, this could be several years that you're going to hold this post. Um, and the key really is to make sure that as the presidents uh, revolve, um, they, they continue working on the goal that you're working on with your club secretary, your club treasurer, and, and that uh, you're working on together as membership service and marketing. Mm Mike, how about you? Are you the um, are you you're the membership chair this year? Yeah. And this is the first time. This is not the first time you've been in that position, or is it? This is this will be the start of my second year doing it. Yeah. Second, well, okay. All right. You guys had added some new members, right? We had seven or eight new members uh, during this year, and of course, we're looking forward to next year. We need to beef it up just like everybody else. So. Had a few dropouts during COVID and stuff like that, so not much you can do about those. People move, people change, but you keep on having projects that you try and get people to. You can keep on trying to drag them in to help with projects and stuff, and that seems to work. Uh, still working on people and our blood drives, and then of course we have a food distribution project, which even comes up this Friday. And oh, I'd say we got at least. 12 or 15 new volunteers that help with that and of that I'd say there's two or three good prospects in there but it's much like I've already heard people say here you tend to have a project you ask people to help with it and then uh, you kind of like build a relationship around that once you build a relationship around that it seems to kind of work out people find them more comfortable to be with you and do stuff with you and we've gotten a pretty good group on that uh, we started a new type of fundraiser, which uh, meets every Wednesday at a local bar where you turn cards over on a deck. And the, uh, the amount of money is up to over 70000 on the raffle, and we've still got like 12 cards left in that deck of 52 cards to do. So people are coming like flies to this thing, and it's kind of fun to be able to talk to some people. It's kind of interesting because we got a couple of fellows from the Marshall Club that come and Try and see if they can win that money too. So um, it's kind of interesting. I, it's a little bit different. A different project we did to make money is uh, we start doing roundup with the uh, the local uh, food stores, the Piggly Wigglies, and uh, 
it is absolutely amazing because of, I don't know if anybody, is anybody else familiar with that, what a roundup is? Mm. Roundup is when you go and you talk to the management of the, of the uh, food store and explain you, your club to them and everything else and what you do. And then they ask their customers when they check out at the cashier. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. If, oh, they'd like, no. if they'd like to round up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, okay. Uh, okay. The first time we tried it, the middle of last year, uh, we only made like about three, four thousand dollars for one month. And we did it again this year for a month and we were up to six thousand dollars. So wow. uh, it seems to work. And what's really nice about it is if you shop there at that specific store also, it's nice because it's, it's your way of checking out that they're doing it. And uh, many times our members will then go in. And if somebody doesn't ask them to round up, they ask them why or if there is some kind of <laughs> roundup going on. It's, it's an excellent way to, if you will, keep the employees in line. I know that doesn't sound very good, but uh, it, it works. <laughs> it works. And then they're more, more likely to do because they have no idea who you are or, I mean, they see you as a, customer in their grocery store, but that's all they don't know you necessarily as a lion or anything like that. So uh, I can tell you it works. And if you're you're looking for money to be able to do other things, those are excellent ways to be able to come up with it. Uh, we have had a unbelievable uh, luck over this past startup of this year, the calendar year. Uh, we seen unusual money at our Eskimo Open uh, that we'd never seen before. We could put two Eskimo Opens together and we still made more money uh, this time around than we did. Part of it is just because people had ultimate cabin fever from COVID to get out, but it was very worth it. Um, it worked out very well. But membership wise, yeah, we got three, four different pokers going right now in the fire to uh, try and get it up. But until we get more membership up, until we get more people coming to the meetings again and stuff like that, uh, Zoom is nice, but getting that face to face contact is a lot more important yeah. because that's where you build the fellowship and camaraderie and all that stuff and my current project as far as things we're working on for projects is uh, planting trees either between Point Ed or Lodi depending on which year it is and I'm like three trees behind because I couldn't get anybody to help me with them but now I got somebody that is offering trees to us so I got a chance of getting back into it if I'm not too late I only got another week or two before uh, I'm going to be the idiot that's have to go out there and water those trees at least once a day or every other day to keep them growing and I don't don't really fancy myself being the guy running around water and trees every day. So I haven't figured that part out. Going back to that roundup, is that something that uh, your gro local grocery store uh, does it a month for for right. lakes with Wisconsin Lions and then the next month it may be for the Rotary Optimus, Optimus Club or something? Could be. Could be. Uh, uh, we got a, a sad case of a, uh, a kid who's uh, not going to be able to make it to graduate from high school. He's uh, got serious cancer. It's not going to work. But uh, they had uh, they have something for him. Uh, it's the Piggly Wiggly in Lodi and the Piggly Wiggly in Poinette that we work with on these. And we've been very effective with them at, at doing that stuff. And then uh, to answer the thing for the pediatric care, we donated to the family that has the kid that's got these problems because uh, Needless to say, they can't work. They got to take care of the kid, and the kid's uh, at home with hospice. I guess it'd be the best way I could put it. Until something happens, the uh, high school even graduated him, even though he's only had one year of high school because they know he's just not going to make it anyways. But um, you know, little things like that. When you work on stuff like that, it's kind of I don't well worth it, I guess. Yeah, makes a difference. Colleen, Colleen, how about you? You've been pretty quiet. Well, um, we're kind of a new, a new into this whole Lions organization since we came in as a Lioness Club. And so we haven't had any um, major fundraisers. Um, we used to have a holiday auction and didn't have it for two years because of COVID. And that was always a great fundraiser. And this year we went back to having um, a raffle and a raffle party. And that just happened in April where, you know, we sell 200 tickets and then meet at the maple tree. All numbers are called off and the grand prize and so forth. We provide food and beverages for that. And a couple of things that we've done is um, uh, 
Um, like I said, I always considered the lioness kind of doing the softer side where we collect bears for a grace. It's called the Dory Bear Program. So that's throughout the year, we ask members, they must be new bears. They are then um, given to a grace where if you've had any relationship with a grace at all, they give a, a bear to either the, the uh, parent or the grandchildren or whatever. So they give out a lot of bears. So we collect, you know, maybe 100, 150 bears, and then we take them over and, and you know, that's kind of been going on for several years. And then um, something else that we've done is um, during the major holidays, Christmas, Easter, uh, Valentine's Day and so forth, we fill out, uh, members donate cards, sign them from the, your friends at the McFarland Lioness and their personal name. And we take them to the um, assisted living places here in town and usually take treats along, whether it's candy or cookies or, you know, something like that just for their um, holiday meal. And uh, I'm probably forgetting something, but um, like I said, we're just getting into the whole knowing how to get into the My Lion and uh, My LCI and all of that, but our, our leaders, president, secretary, are continuing on. So I think we've got a handle on it now. So getting our numbers in there and, you know, making sure everything is up to date, we kind of were pushing on that. But um, like I said, we're just, um, this is our first year as a Lions Club. And we kind of try and, you know, we work closely with the Lions Club here in town. Yep. But we still kind of, um, people knew us as Lioness. So when we're out selling a poinsettias or doing something, they identify with that as much as anything. So we kind of make sure we keep that name so they know we're not, you know, like I said, we could be part of the Lions. We had that option, of course. But just that um, we're just, you know, trying to make sure that the people that knew us as Lioness know us as now Lioness Lions. I mean, we're... We've changed our name, so to speak, <laughs> but what we do is um, is still going on. And like I said, we have you know the Lions Club does the chicken barbecue for Memorial Day. We do the bake sale. Great part plug. Of it. <laughs> yeah. Great plug for your Lions Club. <laughs> um, I do want to I do want to comment on uh, what Colleen is saying though. This is a good reason um, to be attending um, your zone meetings and region meetings. Um, the Lioness. Uh, clubs. We, we had three join our district this last year. And historically, they were doing different projects that uh, oftentimes we weren't doing as lions. Um, there's a lot of good ideas there for, uh, for good service projects. Um, I know that uh, Lion Joanne Traniglia and Betty Ingwell, and I'm sure your club was doing this too, Colleen. Um, there's a lot of blankets that are made, uh, tie blankets that are made yes. and donated to the Children's Hospital. Um, as Steve was saying, that's becoming harder to do, but as COVID restrictions hopefully ease up, that's a, that's a really good uh, project that you can do for childhood cancer. Um, and it's, it's fairly easy as long as there's not a fabric shortage. Uh, but other, you know, other uh, service projects like toy, toy drives, um, like Colleen was saying, they, they buy stuffed animals that are clean. Um, those, are, those are great. Those are great uh, service projects around the holidays or any time of the year. Um, we're, we're quickly running out of time. I want to call on Michelle quick to see if she Can I just get sure. back to you, Adam? Sure. Uh, this is Colleen again. I just wanted to say, you know, you mentioned there are three of the clubs that converted out of 12. So there are a lot of ideas that are out there that mm -hmm. can still be used. So I'm sure if you have a contact in those towns where there were Lions clubs that didn't convert to Lions, um, you can tap into those and get some good ideas. And actually that's that's a good point. I, thank you for bringing that up because several of our Lioness clubs that did fold, their members joined uh, local Lioness clubs in Beloit, Wanakee, oh. and I am drawing a blank on the other big ones. <laughs> um, but uh, they did. They did join 
uh, their Lions clubs and are bringing those ideas um, to their clubs. Um, with that being said, Michelle, I'm going to call on you quick. I know you said in the chat to me that you were you were new to Lions. I wanted to see if you had anything to share. Um, I am, I am very new. I think we're just under a year. We have hosted three of our Lion Club meetings at at our office space. Um, I, I feel like being new to the area, I feel like we could definitely get the word out that we're here. So that's why I was drawn to the marketing side. Um, and I grew up in a service family and I'm really excited to try some new things. And every, I'm in Edgerton, um, so it's really small. And everyone here is, is pretty open. That's the other nice thing. There's, we have a member, I guess, who's been a member for 35 years. And yet everybody's still pretty open to a new idea. So I'm pretty excited. I think we could put Edgerton on the map. And that's the excitement we need. We need. Um, I see Tony left before I call on her. Um, <laughs> Uh, Bill, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump to you quick. Okay. <laughs> Tony's back. Yeah. Tony's back. Um, what? Uh, I, I forgot where I was going with that. Uh, any, I guess. Well, Bill, I, you've got some. I, I know you've got just your experience outside of lines. I mean, we're we're excited that you're going to be our membership chair, and and like I said you before you're going to end up wearing a couple other hats probably yeah i know here but <laughs> i know you've got some great ideas and things that we surely haven't done i i think in our club um you know we've a lot of new uh new younger members but in, i think basically that was because we had an epad uh a no. couple no. members that were under 40 come in okay you know they brought in it's just Eight, ten of their neighbors, which is awesome. But uh, yeah. Bill, go ahead and kind of talk what you've been thinking about doing. Well, I'm, um, and Steve's hit on a little bit of this, but um, I'm known around the town. I, I, I volunteer for a lot of things. That's what I want to do. What people know me for is uh, working, volunteering at the media center and uh, doing my radio shows, TV shows, things like that. And one of the, the ideas, one of the thoughts I had from watching uh, uh, one of the Lions International YouTube videos was creating actually a membership video um, where we can um, have Lions talking about why they joined Lions, why, why mm -hmm. it's so important to them. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it'll be, we can do this at no cost. Because mm -hmm. yeah. each one of us probably has a community um, media center mm -hmm. in the area. Monona is one of them. I mean, we, they're, they're all over the place, but, and I can help find those for everybody. But um, I think that's a way to, to improve our membership chances by showing, by sharing our stories mm -hmm. and through the generations. And we definitely have to have the, that female quality in there for, because there's such a presence. Oh my gosh, Kelly Harnish in our club, is is amazing she's like 10 of us wouldn't you agree steve i would agree to get her story out and why it's so important to be a lion but um um for me i'm excited about the membership role because i want to work on retention i want to i want to find out how, what makes everybody else tick and then i want to challenge everybody to to at least recruit one person just one i know it's a big feat and if we've got 85 members and we could get 85 new ones, that would be amazing. But um, if you don't ask, you don't get it, you know. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Short and sweet. <laughs> PDG, Rob, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on you next. Well, I don't have a specific job as, as membership or marketing or service. I'm kind of a little bit of everything, but uh, I've been involved with uh, membership for many years and 
I think a key piece is having uh, your new members with a proper orientation so they know what your club does, what the district and uh, state does, and also that we're part of the world's largest service organization. So they need to understand what LCI and LCIF really do. And of course, uh, we put together an orientation PowerPoint last year. <clears throat> uh, anybody wants to get a hold of me, I can get you a PD, uh, either a PDF or a PowerPoint copy of it. But I, I think it's really important for new members and in fact, our own members to understand. We do have an annual meeting in August where we invite members of the community to a, a pizza outing at the Mo local American Legion. And during it, we've tried to put on a short 10 minute presentation on just what Lions is so that anybody that doesn't know about it uh, understands it. Uh, one, I think one of the key things with new members is finding out what, what interests them. What is it they wanna do? Make sure that they have the opportunity to work on committees that interest them. <clears throat> and uh, we typically stress that uh, the committee chairs make sure they get all members involved that are on their committees. And we're pretty strong. I think we have like 12 different committees in our club, but that's the easiest way of, of uh, distributing responsibilities. <clears throat> um, for those that are on the call to, uh, on this discussion, I really suggest you get a hold of the President's ebook. It has an excellent uh, overall discussion of the different aspects within the club, the different officers' responsibilities. And then I guess the last one is uh, pick a mentor. Make sure your new members have a mentor who's going to work with them, not a sponsor, mm -hmm. but a mentor, somebody who's going to guide them. Uh, once you find out what their interests are, it might be easier to pick a, a mentor to sign with them. Uh, but those are the pieces I think that's helped our club quite a bit. And we've sustained over the years. We have members leaving, members coming in. Uh, but we've always been able to slowly, well, not always slowly, but constantly increase the club membership. And it's really important. Make sure that uh, a happy, happy lion is an active lion. You've heard that for years and you can't beat that. Thanks. Hey, Rob, can I, I can. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Adam, can I um, sure. just make a comment? Uh, that orientation Yep. was my aha for the night yeah. uh, with what yep. Rob said, because I've been in, I think I'm on my seventh year, sixth or seventh year, but I remember the first two or three years I was lost. I mean, I just did what I was told to do, show up here, show up there. But I, I think having that orientation process, I was very fortunate. I've got a great group of guys that, that I call mentors uh, within Lions that um, have guided me but I still would have benefited from a more formal orientation. Mm -hmm. uh, being on um, uh, district governor's cabinet, I was lost. I was telling to go here, go there. And I'm like, I don't even know what that acronym means. Right. So, so uh, Rob, thanks for that aha. It means aha. And uh, I, I want to comment on that too. Um, like Bill, I was, I was very fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. Um, having several mentors, uh, both in my club and at the district level, that kind of bring me along. And, um, you know, you quickly learn an officer role, and then all of a sudden, they're looking for, they, they see that, unfortunately, in my my uh, case, I'm young. So, uh, you know, bring, bring you along. And, hey, how would you like to be a zone chair? We'll, we'll teach you on the job. And, and oh, hey, here's another role for you. <laughs> Um, Rob, Rob is exactly right. Um, that is an aha moment. Uh, thank you, Bill, for that comment, because orientation is um, really important for teaching uh, the members why we're here and why this is important. And then, yes, also with uh, having a good mentor um, to kind of to kind of bring you along into the fold. Um, before I call on Tony, I want to mention that I also threw the club president's booklet here in the chat if you'd like to download it. Um, that might be a quicker way of getting it, um, and we'll we'll remember to send that to send that out. 
actually, and Tony sent me a direct message. Actually, Tony, we did have a club orientation. Um, yeah, you probably were lost because I remember who ran that. <laughs> um, uh, Tony, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, Tony is a, a director for my club, um, very, very adept at learning and, and uh, uh, really taking it all in right now. And uh, I, I, I wanted to call on her as well to um, kind of get her perspective. Thanks for putting me on the spot there, uh, Lion there. Um, yeah, I don't know. It is, it, it is all very, very, I'm trying to get some light going here. Um, but it is pretty new for me. I'm definitely trying to soak in as much as I can and take in, um, the more I come to these meetings and different, you know, the districts and things like that, I just, I get really much more jazzed and pulled in and just learn more and more about this club. And I, you know, I just want to find more ways to get active and, just share that whole excitement and keep growing our own club. I think our club has done a really good job with finding different things. And that's what brought me in is the different activities that we do, the different fundraisers. But I think, you know, continuing to bring in some new ideas is it's just really exciting. It's just, it's awesome to be a part of this. Thank Very you, simple. Tony. Thank yeah. you. Tony. <laughs> Tony's our spark plug, so. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and that's and, and that, that's a good uh, point, Kay, because um, you need that. Like right now, Tony's a director, but she's somebody that, you know, we, we know is going to move up um, into another officer role at some point. And that's that's a good way to get uh, New Lions started and, and orient, orientated. Um, by letting them join your board of directors and, and ask those questions. And, and by doing that, they're, they're questioning, well, why do we do this? And, and it makes you think, stop and think, well, why are we doing it this way? Um, and, and I think that's good. I think that's good because they're there to learn, but they're also, they're also forcing our club officers to learn too. And um, it's making more of a cohesive unit as I'm seeing on in our board, where we're, we're starting to work more as a team instead of individuals. And by board, I mean our, our executive officers and our board of directors. How are you guys feeling? Good. Good. <laughs> uh, anything, we got two minutes left. Anything else to share? I was wondering, um, this is Kay, that Rob, Sherman um, said he had that orientation PowerPoint. Yeah. What's a good way to distribute that? I'd like to get that for our group. I agree. I'd like to get that. Um, is that something you want to share? Or are you still are you still uh, running running those seminars? Uh, we haven't been running them in a while. I mean, I can do it, but uh, I can share it. I'm looking now, trying to find it. I've got a couple of them. Uh, is the easiest way is just get it to you, Adam? Yeah, uh, yeah, that'd be the easiest way. Okay. Thanks. In, in this case. <laughs> yep. Yep. Anything else? Adam, are you gonna go back to the main room? Is that? Uh... Yeah, you, uh, I believe you and I are gonna go back to the main room. But uh, before we before we take off, I just wanted to say thank you, everyone. Uh, you know, for giving us your time tonight and uh, for the for the great discussion. Um, I hope that it was uh, worth well worth everyone's time and that you learned a lot. Yep. Thank you. Thank Feel free you. to reach out to us. We're here to answer questions and and direction and if you have things to share please share it we can spread it around there's uh 60 clubs in our district and everybody's looking for more information so absolutely and with that uh before uh we're either going to get kicked out or uh you're free or you're free to leave the room but uh thank you everyone for, uh for a great discussion tonight and uh uh good luck this next year thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.